So here's the worst possible case scenario that we all dread. I came back from a trip and tried to boot up my 2015 27 inch 5K Retina screen Mac and it won't start. And not only that, but both my time capsule and my time machine also aren't reading any data. Here's what happened next and what I've decided to do. So I got back from Japan and I was left looking at a Apple startup logo and it just hung there. After a few cycles of restarts with that line not progressing beyond halfway, I wasn't even getting that. I started getting the folder with the question mark flashing up a link. Once I typed that link into my iPad, I went through the steps that took hours, by the way, of using disk utility to try to fix the startup disk and then trying to create my own startup disk, which worked, but it still left me out of my drive and not able to get at my files. And yes, don't ask me how, but my wireless time capsule and time machine weren't doing anything useful either. By this time, I'd had a sleep and been working on it the whole of the following morning. I decided to stop there and book it in for professionals to take a look. They said it would take three to four business days. That was Wednesday afternoon last week. I didn't hear back from them until the following Tuesday afternoon. And in the meantime, my workflow was paralyzed because although I use my iPad for most of my editing process and my iPhone to film, my Mac is heavily involved in the research process. I found myself paralyzed all week. It wasn't good news from the company. They said the SSD had failed on the Fusion drive. This is a combination SSD and traditional spinning HDD. The SSD seemed to be the startup disk and the data is spread across that 128 gig SSD and the two terabyte HDD. They couldn't do anything and recommended I talk to a data recovery specialist. So I called who they recommended and they didn't like what they heard. They reckoned they only had a 50-50 chance of recovering my data and they would need to ship it from where I live, Wellington in New Zealand, across the Tasman Sea to Sydney in Australia to their lab where they would see what they could do. If they couldn't recover the data, I wouldn't pay anything. But if they could, it would cost me $800. And that was the cheapest service they could do for me. It would take about three weeks. Anything quicker than that would cost me significantly more. Ouch. As far as the original iMac is concerned, I had some decisions to make. Do I scrap it or leave it for a while and see what happens with the data recovery process? The original service engineer said that the HDD of the original drive was looking okay and they could reinstall it with a fresh Mac OS install but that was probably a little risky seeing it was an eight year old Mac. I also think with such an old Mac, I wasn't going to depend on it for anything critical, but for anything at all now. The machine had been slowing down and other critical components like the screen or motherboard could just go with no warning. In the end, I decided to shell out a further $200 to fit a new HDD in the machine and a fresh install. I'll take delivery of that later this week and it will most likely become a family computer for internet surfing, watching TV and perhaps playing games. But what to do to replace my main computer? I had a few choices. Let me walk you through them. If you're not familiar with the Apple certified refurbished store, it's great. You get factory refreshed computers with a full Apple warranty sold to you by Apple themselves. Bigger countries have more stock going through their returns processes, so you get more choice in their certified refurbished store. If you're in the market for a new Mac or MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, and you don't need the very latest and greatest, it's a great place to get a guaranteed bargain at sometimes up to 20% off the list price. I have bought from there several times in the past, but what I was looking at wasn't in that certified refurbished store. Sure, I could get a well-specced 13-inch MacBook Air for a good price, but it wouldn't be all that great. You start paying quite a lot if you want more than 8 gigabytes RAM and 256 gigabytes storage. And my understanding is that the 256 gigabyte models from Apple use a cheaper and slower storage module than those with 512 gigabytes and above. So that wasn't an option for me. No, what I really had my eye on was a 15 inch MacBook Air, but it's so recently released that there were none of those in the certified refurbished store. 
and the one with the spec I wanted was going to cost over $3,200. This was proving to be a very, very expensive problem indeed, and that's not even getting any of my data back. Fortunately, my photos and other key data were in the cloud, but there's a lot on those old drives that I need. I just hope the data recovery people can work their thing on them. Anyway, what am I going to do? In the end, I decided to go for the best value Mac on the market, fresh out of the certified refurbished store on Apple New Zealand. And it only came out in January this year. I ordered a Mac Mini. And not just any Mac Mini. This one has the M2 Apple Silicon processor, as well as 16 gigs of unified RAM and 512 gigs of storage. For me, this seems to be the best bang for buck for speed and performance for everything from internet browsing, writing, up to intensive photo and video editing and renders. And I had it confirmed for me on the social network T2 that I had made exactly the right choice. I could bring my Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse over from my iMac and replace them with an Apple wired keyboard and mouse that I had lying around for what is gonna become that family computer, that 27 inch iMac. So what will I do for a screen? Well, for a couple of days, I'll use the second Samsung TV we have in the house, connecting that to my new Mac mini, which should arrive on Friday via HDMI. But a couple of days from now, after much research that took me pretty much all afternoon I decided to go for the BenQ PD2700Q, a 27-inch 2K QHD sRGB monitor. I did think about a 4K monitor, but with the budget I have, I would have had to start to compromise on things like better connectivity or quality of image. With this option, it's perfectly good resolution quality and size for what I need it for, as well as a host of connectivity options like USB ports to really expand the capability combined with the limited port availability on the Mac Mini. So this BenQ monitor with the M2 16 gig, 512 gig Mac Mini M2 will really be the best components in each category combined to give me a machine that will hopefully last me a number of years. I probably need to drop another $250 on another two terabyte Samsung T7 SSD, but I can then also use this interchangeably with my M1 iPad Pro. It will be my second T7. Altogether, I have a much more integrated system now that both of my main machines will be running M1 and M2 Apple Silicon. And there's a whole host of features that will open up to me that I didn't have access to before, like being able to use my iPhone as a webcam if I wanted to, though I think I'll be sticking to my Insta360 link. Now I have those connectivity options built into that monitor. But I do wonder about multicam capability. Is that possible perhaps? Anyway, I'll keep you posted about how my data recovery goes and how I bed in my new system. And I still have to understand why my time machine failed on a separate HDD. Next up, you might enjoy this and I'm looking forward to the Apple announcement about how the new phones are shaping up. I'm eagerly awaiting news of the 15 Pro Max and the kinds of cameras it might have. Till later, try to have a less stressful week than I just had. See you around.